Hey YouTube, so um, I want to talk a little bit about discrimination today, all right? And this is specifically discrimination with IFPs. I'm not going to go into details about common discrimination, I'll be a whole different video and whatnot. This is specifically to me what I have dealt with, and I think I've been one of the lucky ones, and so, and I think there's factors that, that make me one of the lucky ones in this situation. Um, but if you are enjoying these videos, or like this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll do more, many more transition videos. Um, at the same time, I did um, ask in several videos to pose some questions to me, so I can do some Q&A answer um, sessions. I have three questions so far, and I am welcome to more, so as, if you have questions you'd like to ask a trans person, please ask. Um, please don't be afraid to ask awkward questions too. I am awkward, it's what I do, so I might as well answer awkward questions too. That's okay, okay? Um, so post those in the comments or send them to me through my Facebook or through which is linked to my YouTube or through YouTube or whatever. Okay. Um, so when it comes to discrimination that I have faced specifically while transitioning in my, during my gender transition, um, I recognize that I kind of have some, some privilege going into this and that's the fact that I am a senior non-commissioned officer. I'm a sergeant first class in the army So I and I'm an equal opportunity advisor. So I think both of these things combined, they, they kind of help to protect me um, from some blatant, um, overt discrimination. Um, but I do deal with several things uh, on the co covert side that aren't so obvious um, that I see. And I perceive these as, as um, judging me for who I am and things like that. So, for, for instance, I get meticulously looked at for... Uh, my appearance um, when it comes to nails and makeup and all kinds of stuff. So I make sure I open the manual and I understand the guidance for makeup, for hair, and for nails, and all these things to make sure I stick within those guidelines. Um, but a few things I face is um, I'm not going to mention names of any individuals or ranks or positions of those who have brought this up. Some of them have been senior individuals and some of them junior. Um, but I'm not here to call anybody out or to create any 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 problems for who might watch these videos. I'm not trying to put a bad case in someone's mouth. So one thing I've dealt with is people will look at my 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 picture, right? Or um, an image they have of me, because as the eco opportunity advisor of the brigade, my um, photo is required to be in every um, company, battery, battalion, area in in the brigade, in, in, in the fire station. Okay. So that's a lot of offices, that's a lot of, of um, headquarters areas, and so it's in a lot of, a lot of places. So I'm currently on my second picture, because the first picture, uh, it was brought to my attention that somebody felt that my makeup was out of regulation. They felt that my eyeshadow time was um, took away from, from the uniform. Uh, the regulations say it has to, it can't take away from the uniform, it has to fit the uniform, so you can't wear like bright pinks and reds and purples and things like that. Um, it's subdued colors and brown, can't be super flashy, all that stuff. It's not supposed to be because you're not, it's not supposed to be all those things, right? It's supposed to be more subdued. And a lot of things are easier, it, it, the commander's discretion, whether they are or not. Um, so that gives commanders that power and sometimes can make it difficult to, to tell. So my makeup at the time, my eyeshadow was a, it was brown, but had like a slightly um, reddish tint, kind of like red dirt, right? Um, but it wasn't red or pink in any means. It was like, I don't know, um, yeah, red, red dirt, you know, clay, the clay. Um, and so it was brought to my attention that there was um, someone higher ranking than me that felt that it was too um, pink. And I think it might have been because the, the printer they had the image, because it wasn't, it wasn't, definitely wasn't pink. Um, but the point is, is I deal with those things a lot, so I was told I had to go take a home picture. Um, and there were several other commanding, so I tried to ask for advice, and then they didn't find it, other people didn't find it that way. But it's not my call to say, it's, it's commander's discretion, so you got to make that call. And it wasn't my commander, so again, I'm not trying to 
your fingers out. Right? But I said I'd take me a picture. So at the same time, I've been standing next to people who are out of regulation. Um, and people look at me, like my nails and things like that, and say, you know, uh, why, do you, why do you have like French tips, for example? When I, I don't have French tips. I've never in the Army had French tips. I've had French tips in the square world. I've never had French tips in the, in the Army. Um, regulation says clear. You can have acrylic nails, but it has to be clear. And they can't be past a quarter inch past the tip of the finger. Um, and so I've made sure I've adhered to that uh, completely. Not as much as possible, completely. And so I get called out saying I have I have French tips. It's not it's not the case. I didn't at the time. Uh, they didn't look anything like French tips. But I found it funny because there there was people around me at the time that were out of regulation quite a bit. And yet I was singled out. Now the reason I think I was singled out is because I, I realize I have very masculine features on my face. I get it, I get that. So what I think happens, this is all speculation, but I think people look at me, um, military members, look at me, senior leaders, and they see what they perceive as male features. And they're not used to seeing male features having um, makeup, on and hair within female regulations and all these, these kinds of things. And so what I think their brain does is go, there's something wrong with this. There's something wrong with this person. Or there's something wrong with this picture. Um, and instead of going, hey, you know what? It might be my bias, because everyone has bias. We all, we all do. It's a matter of identifying that bias and putting it away. But instead of going, hey, you know what? It might be my bias. It might be the fact that I'm not used to seeing someone like this. Um, I just want to look at the rec to make sure it's not, you know, and go, okay, well, then I'll leave it be because I recognize that bias in myself. Well, I don't think that happens because it's hard for some people, hard for a lot of people, to recognize that there might be flaws with their personality um, that, that might have bias. Um, and without being able to recognize that, then you can't combat it. So, without recognizing those biases, then I feel like people they, they look at me and when they go, there's something wrong with this picture, and they can't look at their bias, then they, they, they decide, since there's something wrong, I can't figure it out, let me look close. I'll find it. There is something wrong. There's something off with this picture. I'm going to find what it is. And then they look, and they look, and then they start to mentally create their own things that are wrong with, with, with the image. If they see one thing, they're like, maybe that could be wrong, suddenly becomes, it's that, it's that, that's what's wrong, that's the thing, you know, um, such as nails, okay, they're clean, good, could those be French, could those be French tips, to suddenly, they must be, they must be, because I don't have any bias, so they must be French tips, they must be something that I have I can't be wrong. I can't be mistaken. Um, and so that I get tested and checked on those things and have to redo stuff, some things, or have to go show off my stuff to a, a first sergeant or a commander or whoever it might be to verify, to re verify that I'm not out of regulation. So, and if I am out of regulation, then I want someone to let me know, right? But be able to. Be sure, be able to recognize in the regulation where I'm wrong and what is wrong within the, right, within the regulation. Um, but that's mainly what I face. And I, I face also, um, I get misgendered a lot. Um, not a lot, generally speaking. Most people are pretty, pretty cool. Even people I just meet at like restaurants, like waitresses and, and things like that, then they're normally good. You know, they see makeup, they see me, they see skirt, they see whatever it is. And yeah, just great. Where I face the most discrimination is actually with um, the the main medical facility here. I, I deal with a lot of that with the front desk, where they they refer to me as he a lot. Even I'll correct them. Like you're looking at my file right now, it says she, and yet you keep calling this. And I'm wearing makeup and I have longer hair. 
um, and all the all these things that that um, are indicative of, of me being female in the female regulation arm regulation, right? So I'm wearing my uniform, I have makeup on. It's probably safe to assume that my pronouns are female pronouns and that I am female. So but they'll continually mis misgender me, call me he, even right after I correct them. And I try to be nice about the person. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, it's it's me. It's me. Oh, okay, where's that? Man, I just told you that. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, sir, can you? Really? And this will happen in the span of like two minutes. Just get mis misgendered constantly from, from these individuals that I've corrected time and time and time and time and time again. And that's happened on many occasions to the point where now if I go to this, this location that I have anxiety with it because I, I don't want to do it. Um, they're disrespectful and I don't appreciate it. When it's real easy just to do the, I think, like, you don't have to agree with me, you don't have to like me. Um, but it's easy to respect someone even if you don't like them. I don't know why I'm going to talk about it. But that really bothers me, and that's the kind of stuff that I face. Or people will, will gender me correctly to my face, which is great, I think things are wonderful. Then I, I'll have, um, another leader that will approach me and they'll be like, does it bother you when so-and-so misgenders you? I'm like, I don't remember so-and-so doing this. I'm like, yeah, as soon as we got done talking to you and we left, then they immediately, immediately started using male pronouns um, or switching back and forth between male and female pronouns. It was a difficult one. Like, oh, interesting. Interesting. So a lot of stuff is not to my face, but tends to um, devalidate me or degrade me around other individuals, um, which potentially it could damage my position. It could damage the, the reputation and respect that I have. What I've noticed, though, is I do have a large amount of support, which is awesome. And so when people do this, um, you're, you're very likely to also damage your reputation because you're showing how non-supportive you can be. And you might have a soldier that's, that's, that's gay or lesbian or pansexual or bisexual or transgender that they haven't come out to you because they don't feel comfortable coming out to you because they hear you behind my back say things. So I'd strongly recommend if you're a leader of any, any group, whether you're military or not, um, be respectful even when that person's not around. The person should, doesn't need to be around you for you to show them respect because um, other people see that and they will rightfully judge you for it. And you will lose, you can lose people's trust um, if you do that. So I have people asking, like, I don't know why so-and-so didn't come to me. Well, you said these things and did this, and so they didn't feel like you were a safe person to not mock them behind their back. Or you wouldn't, or they didn't feel you would take their complaint or their issues seriously because when, when something is brought to you, then, then you act in, an, in a particular manner. So, um, ultimately that's kind of what I face, a lot of covert stuff, as opposed to overt. Um, so in that way I'm lucky, um, but it also makes me, it makes me have a little less trust being around certain individuals, because when, if you're not willing to bring up a, an issue to my face, then I don't know what else you're keeping from me. So, that's what happens. But, ultimately, that's that's my personal stuff, what I deal with, you know, besides, you know, civilians, civilians I walk around getting you know, straight up point at and laugh at and things like that. That happens too. You know. But military wise, that's the way they do it. So, um, with that, I'll end this video. Um, and until next time, once again, if you have more questions, if you have any questions, please submit them um, so I can do a question answer session if we get enough questions. Okay? Thank you, YouTube, and have a wonderful day.